Hi and welcome to this video on how to use SSH key to log in onto your devazure.com account from Git. In the previous video, I've shown how simple it is to use the standard, one of the standard Git credential manager available on Linux to cache your credential and to use S in Windows standard personal access token to log in to your devazure.com account. But usually user um, experienced in Linux are more familiar and more, um, they like more the SSH key. So I'm not going to explain the whole SSH structure, but you got a nice um, tutorial on various um, Git provider like Azure DevOps or, or Git, GitHub on how you can create an SSH key to log in into your server. And SSH key is a real secure way to connect to your account. The first step is creating a couple of private public key in your account. And that's a basic knowledge about public, private, public key cryptography. You generate a key where one part of the key is called private and it's the key you need to keep secret in your account while you have another part of the key that is called public and that's the key you can distribute in your system. And you can use your private key to verify that you indeed possess the private key corresponding to that public key. With this process, you can do a lot of things and SSH uses this method to authenticate you against a server without requiring you to use a password, but using a private key. So the first step is generating a private public couple of key. You can use various options and here I'm using the RSA. It is probably the, um, the old type of key you use with SSH. If you, as an example, go on GitHub, it's suggesting you to use a different algorithm, but it's not important for this tutorial. Just stick with RSA uh, with um, 4096 byte bit uh, length because it's really super secure and you just insert your email. Okay, now the system is asking you where to save the key. You can um, use, you can leave the default and there is a um, .ssh folder under your, under your home folder and the key is usually called id underscore rsa. You can just leave the default. And then you are asking for a password and that's important because the private key is a file that has a key that correspond to your identity. If you get to lose that file, you can, you are in trouble because each person that has your private key can automatically log in into every server where you configure SSH with your public key. So it is usually um, a good idea to protect your local private key file with a password that is used to encrypt the file. So the file, the IDRC file that will be generated will be encrypted with a password and you will be asked for that password when you want to use the, the key to access your server. So please be sure to, to use a password and resist the temptation of using an empty password. Okay, once you created your password, your um, private key, you should have a couple of new files in your SSH folder. And as you can see, you have idrsa and idrsa.pub, and that's the public key. Just let's look at what's inside in your public key. Okay, it's a um, text file where I simply have an header ssh-rsa that is um, containing the algorithm used to generate the key, it's rsa, and then the key, so nothing complex. Now, what 
can I do with this public key? So first of all, you can select everything, copy the whole key, it's just a bunch of ASCII characters, so it can be just copied. Go to your devazure.com account, now I'm in the personal access token um, section, but I need to go on the SSH public key. And this is the place where I am storing my public key. So as you can see, I already have configured um, a WSL2 account. So I have already um, set um, a key. But the important thing is SSH connection is really much more secure because it allows you to authenticate not only you are authenticated to the server, but you can check the fingerprint of the server and verify if it corresponds um, to what it's answering when you connect into the server. So the idea is when you connect to the server, not only you are sending your um, information to verify, to let the server verify that you are indeed who you claim you to are, but you can also check the fingerprint of the server to understand that's no man in the middle that is trying to um, fooling you into authenticated on a server that is not your real server. To add the key, just press the new key, give it a name, and it's demo Linux, and you can just pass the public key data and press add. It is simple. If the format is okay and you um, did know any error, you have your new public key and you always have the option of remove this SSH key if you don't want the private key to be able to authenticate to this account anymore. So you can um, always revoke your key from a server. And if you click on the key, at the contrary, on the contrary, on a personal access token where you cannot see anymore your personal access token after it is generated. And I want to demonstrate this. You go to the personal access token and you can click, but you have only the option to get a new token, to revoke, and if you had it, you can just change the scope of the token. There is no place where the server show you the token because the token is actually not saved on the server to maximum security. You need to keep note of your generated token because the server does not have it anymore. While in SSH public key, I can always, always see my public key because thanks to the public um, key cryptography, this public key, it's indeed public. There's no secret about it. The only particular aspect of this public key data is that it's cryptographically bound to my private key. So I, and only I that have the private key can verify that I indeed have a private key that corresponds to this public key. Now, there is one big difference in using an an SSH key respect using the standard HTTPS way to connect to your server. If you press clone, you need to notice that I have the SSH option because A, the URL you're using to log in it, it, to clone the repository is different because the client, the Git client need to understand that it, this is indeed not an HTTPS connection, but a SSH connection, okay? So you have the option to manage SSH case directly on the clone repository. If you press this, you are taken to, the, to your SSH key page, the page where I was before. You can press link to learn more about SSH, but if you are a Linux user, you should be already experienced in SSH, and I can just copy the URL to clipboard to connect to my repository. The process of cloning is almost identical. I say get clone and the URL, but this time the URL is different because it's an SSH URL. Okay, now that's the important part. The first time you are connecting a server, your SSH client tells you that someone respond on your request and you don't know the authenticity of host because it's the first time that this machine is connecting to this server. So it is actually telling you that 
this is the fingerprint of the server. That's important because before sending any authentication information, again, this server, you can verify if this is indeed the real, the real SHA-256, the real hash of your server. So just go on to the manage SSH key and you have the fingerprint. So you can take your terminal and verify if the key is the same. So it's OHD8VZ, blah, 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 blah. You can copy and paste into a text editor to verify that it's equal, but yeah, that's the same fingerprint. So now I am sure that no one is in, in the middle between me and the server pretending to be this server. And that is guaranteed by cryptographic API by a cryptographic math. So there's no one else that can claim to have this fingerprint because to claim having this fingerprint, the server should have the private key associated to this server. And it's clear that the private key is in the Microsoft hand because it's Microsoft that handled devazure.com. So if anyone else is capable of um, doing a man in the middle connection and creating a fake server where he can, uh, uh, he can intercept my push as an example and steal my code, it is not able to do this because he should be able to match the fingerprint. Okay, this happened only the first time you were looking for this server. And that's because if you are in uh, your .ssh folder, you see a file called known host. So if you check what is inside known host, it contains, uh, as an example, one entry. So I don't know what it, the, the host is. It's not important now, but the idea is if you press e Y, to say, yes, you are telling your SSH client, yes, I confirm that this is the right fingerprint for the ssh.dev.azure.com, so I, you can proceed. I trust this connection, okay? I'm sorry. And now you are um, prompting, you are prompted by a password to unlock your private key because as I told you before, your private key should be protected by a password. Or if anyone is capable of, of stealing from you your ID RSA file, it is able to log in to any server that has your public key. So now you are, um, you are prompted to put a password to unlock your private key and you can flag this, um, this option to automatically unlock this key when you're logged in, depending how, um, how secure you want to be. I can just leave this and check it and type the password. And you're ready to go. As you see, you just cloned your repository. And if you are, Present if you are uh, viewing the known host uh, content again, you can see that you have other entries that corresponds to Azure DevOps. So this means that if I'm going to remove my log library, um, sorry. Now, if I'm going to clone again, what I've got it, I am not anymore presented with the uh, SHA, with the hash of the server, because it's now in the known host. So this client contact the server, he got the, this fingerprint, it correspond to the known host, and it knows no one is in the middle. The server that is answering is indeed Azure dev.azure.com. And now since my credential, my password uh, that is used to protect the private key, it's stored in my key ring, I am not required to type the password of my, um, of my private key anymore. And if I'm going to reboot the machine, the next time I'm logging in, I will be prompt a new time with the password of the private key. But you need to be um, aware that this is a um, standard way of using credential for SSH server for Linux user. So if you are a Linux user, you probably already have a private key. You probably already have all your way to make your private key secure. 
And so there is um, no reason not to use SSH to connect to your Azure DevOps account, mainly because you have this extra security of being able to verify that the server is indeed who it claimed to be and you are not subjected to man-in-the-middle attack. And that's all for this video. I'm waiting you for the next video.